All right, so we're going to continue. Um, we're going to start with, I guess, a small recap, and we're going to look at Newton's laws. All right, so. So Newton's laws. And the first law is the law of inertia, which says that a uh, body will stay in motion in a straight line. So a body moves in a straight line unless it is acted upon by a, an outside force. Some force outside um, acts upon it. Now, Second law says that that force is proportional to the mass times the acceleration. Now, I will posit that because acceleration is a vector, we get the straight line with no change when accelerations are zero, which means the force is zero. So the first law is embodied in the mathematics of the second law. It says that this thing is not going to change because the acceleration is going to be zero as long as the force is zero. And to be complete, we'll say it's the sum of all the forces. Every force that acts upon the object will sum together. And that's the nice thing about our forces is if I have a force in this direction and a force in this direction, and a force in this direction, I have the possibility for the sum to be zero. Right? Because these two can add up together to a force that opposes this one. And we'll try to look at that a bit. We'll use some force tables where we can um, try to find forces. And this state where forces are applied but the sum is zero is part of what we're going to end up calling equilibrium. Right, this is an equilibrium state where the forces are balanced or balanced forces. But if the forces aren't balanced, then the object's going to move. If I did this with ropes and I cut this rope here, there would be a net force in this direction and this object would end up moving in this direction because of the second law. And then the third law says that you know a force of object applied by object one on object two is in equal and opposite direction to a force by object two on one. Things push back. When there is a force that's due to any type of contact or push or pull, there's an equal and opposite directed force. But notice that the objects that they are on are different. And so a lot of our game here, or a lot of what we're going to end up trying to do, is we're going to try to draw the forces that are affecting an object. And we're going to try to look at an object individually to see what its motion is. So we, we want to look at this equal and opposite on how we can actually um, look at an individual object. So if we get an object, which in this case would be a box. And we're going to have the box sitting on a table. Um, now, there are a couple things happening. The, this, this point of contact where the box is on the table, um, there is a, an exchange of force going on. The box, which I will, since it's, I have it in this pink color, I'll put over here. And we tend to make our objects just a dot has gravity coming down. And we'll call this the weight. That's the force we'll use to describe some mass um, being applied to an acceleration due to gravity. And so, so the box has a weight of mg. It's mass times gravity. Since all forces are some mass times acceleration, our weight will need units of mass times acceleration. But this isn't moving. So if we look at F equals MA as a clue uh, for what's happening, there needs to be some force pushing up on it. And so we 
tend to draw that this way, and that's called the normal force. Any object in contact with another object perpendicular to that, that contact point is going to be a normal force. And so for this small system here, we know that the total of the forces is equal to the normal positive upwards direction minus the weight because it's in the downward direction which is also equal to the mass times the acceleration which is zero so the normal minus the weight equals zero or the normal is equal to the weight which is mg and so we know how much the table is pushing back on the box And we also know what the box is pushing on the table. And so this is kind of how we can look at how Newton's laws get applied in a scenario here. We, we can use the second law, look at our situation and go, well, because there's no motion, the forces have to balance out. Well, what forces do we have on the box? And so we come over here to our free body diagram because we have the body free of any other interaction except the forces on it. All right, I'm going to pause this and um, I'm going to we're going to expand our free body diagrams and look at forces in more detail.